Hello, diary. And welcome to my first entry. Hopefully the first of many. My therapist suggested I keep a diary. He says it'll help me get rid of my stabby stabby thoughts. Apparently. Writing everything down will clear out the crazy in my noodle. I guess it's worth a shot. Bilbo from Sherlock has a blog. And Scully used to write about all her cool adventures. Oh, Scully. What I wouldn't give to be a fly on the wall in her closet. Oh, those are some of the things my doctor was saying I need to work on. Shit. Well, let's open up the old folder. Alright, let's see. You know, this just might be too much. But, pff, I can change. Boom. I smell progress. So, when I feel stressed, I like to record people outside my window. I also love video games. Mostly old adventure games, but I'm not picky. Shit. Recently, I played the 2002 adventure game Siberia. It's a game conceived by a Belgian game designer and comic book artist named like most games published by the Adventure Company, this is a point-and-click adventure game. Maybe I'm finally succumbing to the siren song of nostalgia. But games like this have always held a special place in my heart. Positioned somewhere near my love of holding deadly objects, and knowing that at any moment, I could end it all. Siberia is brimming with story, seemingly endless dialogue, and pretty cool characters. In what is probably the 90s, an American lawyer named Kate Walker is sent to a village in the French Alps called Valadilen, although the pronunciation seems to vary. Loss for Valadilen. Here in Valadilen. Town of Valadilen. Her mission is to find the owner of a toy company and get her to sign the factory over to a corporation. She's initially taken back by how pretty and overly complicated everything is, like opening doors and signing paperwork. There is a slight hitch, however, when she finds out that the owner is super dead. Ever vigilant, Kate uncovers that there's actually an heir to the company, and that the job won't be quite as easy as anticipated. And of course, an adventure ensues. Along the way, you make a lot of friends, like Momo. You draw mamas for Momo? Momo want mamas picture. Draw mamas for Momo. You draw mamas for Momo. Momo for Momo. Momo for Momo. Momo acts as Kate's autistic slave boy. Ugh, that ore is all dirty and wet. I've moved the ore nearer. Be a good boy and carry it for me. Ugh. It must be broken. I've got to get a helping hand here. I'm sure this character was meant to break offensive stereotypes. Momo very strong. This game is very relaxed with its depiction of the mentally disabled and people's disdain for them. I would have had little to do with an odd, ageless retard like Hans. Would you quiet down, you mischievous little boy? Now go on, scram! Get out of here, you hear? <laughs> Along the way, people from back home will call Kate to whine about things and be otherwise insufferable. Talking about it's only a measly toy factory. But Kate, Katie, you can't do this. I, your old mother's too dumb to understand it. You really do take after your father sometimes. Hey! All that matters is that you do not set foot back in New York before you've tied up the deal. Get the picture. Where are you off to now? This is crazy, Kate. Kate! I'll feel a whole lot better when this whole business is over and the sales contract is signed. Where the hell are you? What? What in God's name are you doing well, there? if he isn't there anymore, then there's no point hanging around. Where are you? What? Is that a town? 
I hope the man you're looking for lives there. Are you coming home soon? Are you coming back soon? Us? I thought you were alone. Who's with you? I don't know why you accepted it in the first place. Now, if you, you just stuck in the middle of the road, then we wouldn't be in this mess. It was only going to be two or three days. Please, try to put yourself in my shoes. Kate, this is really important. This is real life shit. I play games to get away from this. Also, a lot of the regular dialogue is so awkward and stilted that it may as well be a phone call. A uh, fax didn't arrive for me, did it? Maybe. I thought I heard the phone ring. Do you think you might want to go and check? Certainly not. Immediately. Thank you very much. For the most part, though, there is some great story in here, and it can get pretty heartwarming. Conversely, some moments that could have been heartwarming are glossed over and made mundane. Example! At one point, you meet a cosmonaut named Boris. In a brief time, you learn that Boris was once part of the Russian space program and was destined to fly an experimental craft into space. However, the space program was dismantled and he was left without a job. Now a drunk, he spends his days alone and dreaming of the stars. In exchange for help, you agree to fix up his rocket and fulfill his dreams of space travel. After a whole lot of bother, Boris is finally starbound. And what do we get? That's it. Boris just accomplished his dream. He's probably gonna die alone in the cold vacuum of space. All for want of the cosmos. And what do we get? I mean, seriously, how hard is it to... This is not the end. No... There are, of course, instances where this is done more successfully. As the hero of our story, Kate Walker is kind of lame, in that she's not really a hero. Also, she's afraid of birds. <gasps> She's a regular gal on the go, with chatty girlfriends, a whiny boyfriend, and what sounds like a pretty lavish lifestyle back home. For most of the game, she's kind of a one-note character. And shows less emotion than that thing in my closet. Well, it is a point-and-click game, so you're probably gonna spend the majority of the time doing just that. Also, solving little puzzles, asking people questions, and running around at the speed of a moss song. It seems as though the developers use Kate's slow speed as a way of padding out the game. EXAMPLE! Kate needs to get out of Comcol's grad, and she can't use the train, so she asks Boris if he has a vehicle she can borrow. He tells her that the airship is her best bet, so you run through molasses to the ship, and the door is locked. So you run all the way back, and he's like, Ah oh, yeah, I have the key right here, doy! So you run all the way back and unlock the door. You try to start it up, and it doesn't work. So you run all the way back and say, Bro, that shit don't work. It's really bad form to have so much of your game consist of backtracking back and forth, and in slow motion. Not all characters are slow, though. Shut up, James, and put your foot on it. Aside from that though, it's pretty standard fare for an older point-and-click title. I especially like the bits that have you rifling through people's possessions. That's kind of my thing. Seriously, if you have secret drawers, I'm in that. This is a very pretty game. Even though sometimes it can look muddy and low res, the sorta steampunky environments and pre-rendered ambiance is still very attractive to me. The town of Valley de Laine is especially gorgeous in this 
unsettling, filled with clockwork robots kind of way. Look at that! It's a robot crucifix! Even more creepy than the regular kind! I like all this stuff, but it seems to peter out once you journey out of the first town. I also ran across a couple glitches that in no way affected the dramatic tone of the game. The music is also pretty good throughout, but get ready to hear the same four songs loop over and over. Even the ambient nature track loops pretty clearly. One thing I found myself oddly enjoying was the sound effects. Everything sounds so squeaky and metallic. It makes pushing buttons and pulling levers real satisfying. Given that I have a propensity for games like this, as well as creepy steampunk stuff, I did enjoy many parts of this game. Points for letting me dig through people's belongings. Negative points for boring fetch quests and slow movement. I guess if I'd have to rank it, I'd say it's pretty good. You know, you're a great listener, Diary. I'm glad I sat down to do this. Most people don't like listening to me talk about video games, especially the thing in my closet. Hey closet, what do you think of the new Tomb Raider? What? Oh, I get it, that's very funny. <laughs>